lay not up for yourselves treasures upon earth, but lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven. Take no thought for your life, what you shall eat or drink, nor yet for your body, what you shall put on. This sounds very familiar. Take no thought for your life, what you shall eat, neither for the body, what you shall put on. The life is more than meat, and the body is more than raiment. That sounds like the Sermon on the Mount. Matthew 6, 25, Therefore I say to you, take no thought for your life, what you shall eat, or what you shall drink, nor yet for your body, what you shall put on. Is not the life more than meat, and the body than raiment? Yeah, this is very close. I feel like putting these together. How far should I go? Luke continues, you're better than the fowls. Who of you with taking thought can add to his stature one cubit? The lilies, okay, um, including that. Consider the lilies, how they grow. They toil not, they spin not. Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like one of these. If then God so clothe the grass, which is today in the field, how much more will he clothe you? O oh, you of little faith. Okay, so all the way to oh, you of little faith. All that is definitely going to be moved. After that, and seek not you what you shall eat or what you shall drink, neither be you of doubtful mind. For all these things do the nations of the world seek after, and your Father knows that you have need of these things. But rather seek the kingdom of God, and all these things shall be added to you. Take my thought, saying, What shall we eat? What shall we drink? For these things the Gentiles seek. Your Heavenly Father knows that you have need of these things, but seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. Seek ye the kingdom of God, and these things shall be added to you. Fear not, little flock, for it is your Father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. The next verse in Matthew says, Take therefore no thought for the morrow, for the morrow shall take thought for the things of itself. That, I don't know if that's here. Sell that you have and give alms. Provide yourselves bags which wax not old. A treasure in heaven that fails not, where no thief approaches, neither moth corrupts. That sounds similar to what was mentioned earlier in Matthew. Lay not up for yourselves treasures upon earth, where moth and rust does corrupt, and where thieves break through and steal. But lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven, where neither moth nor rust does corrupt, and where thieves do not break through nor steal. For where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. For where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. Yeah, that's almost exactly what's here in Luke. Up until verse 34, that is very similar to the Sermon on the Mount. For where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. But it says no man can serve two masters here in Matthew. That's not here in Luke. So that I'll leave of the Sermon on the Mount. For either you will hate one and love the other, or else he will hold to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and mammon. Or maybe I should have it twice. Sell that you have and give alms. Provide yourselves bags which wax not old. A treasure in the heavens that fails not. Where no thief approaches, neither moth corrupts. There are some parts of these chapters, Luke 11 through 17, that I feel are definitely moved here. Like blasphemy against the Holy Spirit. Like the advice about not preparing what to say when you're brought before rulers, because it's the Holy Ghost that will speak through you. Like the woes to the Pharisees. So I'm not sure if these words, which are very similar to the Sermon on the Mount, belong here anymore. I know the Sermon on the Mount definitely combines stuff there, but so does Luke here. So where should these words be? Lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven. I know tradition is that the Sermon on the Mount is very popular. Everyone, well, not everyone, those who really care know the Sermon on the Mount. And they know this is a, an extremely famous passage in the Sermon on the Mount, Matthew 6. But I know that portions from the Sermon on the Mount are just moved there from elsewhere. So I would originally think to move it here, but all of a sudden, Luke seems to be doing some stuff similar as well. 
And this is a pretty long passage. Almost all of Luke 12 is in red, Jesus' words. He's talking to them about leaven of the Pharisees. Fear him who has power to cast into hell. Beware of covetousness, the parable of the man who tore down his barns and said, I'll just chill now for the rest of my life because I'm ready. He's talking about be not worried about the future. I mean, obviously, don't be lazy, but don't worry about the future. He's talking about being watchful. The wise steward, later on in verse 42, Father, the division of a household, responsibility. Those who knew his Lord's will and prepared not will be beaten with many stripes. But he that knew not is not worthy of many stripes, so he'll be beaten with few stripes. So he's talking about a whole bunch of stuff here in Luke 12. I don't know where it should go. Okay, the context of Luke 12, just before, is don't be lazy, right? The guy who tore down his barns and said, Soul, take your ease, eat, drink, and be merry. God said, No, you fool, you're going to die this night. You didn't prepare for yourself treasures in heaven. So, not laziness. So, seek the kingdom of God. That actually does fit here because he's saying you don't have treasures in heaven. You're going to die tonight. You know what? I think it really fits here because he's talking about the lilies of the field, the grass. Solomon's not arrayed in such splendor because God takes care of them. God will also take care of you. And that's like a juxtaposition to the lazy man who built his barns, put all his food there, and said, now I'm just going to take my ease. So he's saying, don't be lazy and don't be worried, right? They're opposite sides of the spectrum. They're both wrong. You need to be balanced. You need to be a good steward with right priorities. I think it really does fit here. In Matthew, the Sermon on the Mount, just before this, he's saying, when you fast, be not as hypocrites of a sad countenance, for they disfigure their faces that they may appear to men to fast. I say to you, they have their reward. So being honest, having integrity, don't be proud. God will reward you openly. Lay not for yourselves treasures upon earth where moth and rust does corrupt. That seems like a change of subject. Just before both of these, he's saying, when you pray, enter you in your closet. When you shut your door, pray to your Father which is in secret. Okay, again, still, be humble. Don't be proud. So it does seem like a change of subject. Well, being humble means you're laying up for yourselves treasures in heaven, not treasures here on earth. That would be pride. That would be worldly selfishness, like appearing to men to fast, being religious, and saying your prayers openly. So that, that fits. Afterwards, it says, Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. Take therefore no thought for the morrow, for the morrow should take thought for itself. Yeah, that fits with worrying from here in Luke. What you shall eat, what you shall drink. Be not doubtful for these things the nations of the world seek after. Take no thought for the morrow. Yeah, the words take no thought for the morrow, for the morrow shall take thought for itself, is not here in Luke, but the subject is. And seek not what you shall eat or what you shall drink, neither be doubtful of mine, for all these things that the nations of the world seek after, and your Father knows that you have need of these things, but rather seek the kingdom of God. I can rest easy with moving this from the Sermon on the Mount to Luke. Yeah, I think it's good that way. And I really like the comparison of the lazy man who got all his possessions in place and then said, I'm just going to eat, drink, and be merry. So that's one side of the spectrum versus the other side of uh, being worried about your clothes, about your food. God will take care of your needs. So therefore, you need to have your priorities on the kingdom. That's a good comparison, one versus the other. Here in Matthew, it's talking about being humble, having integrity, having your treasures in heaven, worrying, clothing. Yeah, so I'm going to do that. So from after it says, you cannot serve God and mammon. That's not here in Luke. I'll leave that in this Sermon on the Mount. However, this verse, for where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. That is here in Luke. For where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. Although it really fits with what was mentioned earlier. Uh, lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven. Maybe, yeah, the whole section. 
Lay not up for yourselves treasures upon earth where moth and rust does corrupt, but thieves break in and steal. In verse 33 of Luke 12 it says, Provide yourselves bags which wax not old, a treasure in the heavens that fails not, where no thief approaches, neither moth corrupts. Because of that, I think all this can be moved, including lay not up for yourselves treasures upon earth. So all the way down to, but seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things shall be added to you. I'm not sure about take therefore no thought for the morrow. Sufficient to the day is the evil thereof. That's the end of chapter 6. The beginning of chapter 7, judging not, is also a different subject. So, at the end of chapter 6, sufficient to the day is the evil thereof. That doesn't quite fit with the next paragraph. But I don't know if it fits with this one either. Take therefore no thought for the morrow, for the morrow shall take thought for the things of itself. Sufficient to the day is the evil thereof. With, seek ye first the kingdom of God in Israel. Yeah, I guess it does. It's close. It's closer than the next paragraph, so I'll combine that as well. So all the way from lay up for yourselves treasures upon earth, all the way down for sufficient is the day. All that I'll move. Matthew 6, 19. Oh, that's right. I moved the light of the body already. 22 through 23. No man can serve two masters. That's where it picks up again. So those two verses... <laughs> That's funny. Those two verses within this section go one place. The larger section without those two verses go another place. And the rest of Matthew chapter 6 I'll leave here. Yeah, I'm, I'm really convinced Matthew's just throwing stuff together. So all of that, 24 through 34, I'm moving. 